In this presentation, a type 4-2-A1 fracture of the tibial shaft will be reduced and stabilized. Using the large external fixator with a rod-to-rod -rod modular frame. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the clinical indications for the application of the large external fixator, the choice of frame type, the positioning and correct insertion of the shunt screws, and the construction of the rod-to-rod -rod modular frame. The most common indications for the large external fixator include fractures with severe soft tissue damage, either open or closed, including fractures of the tibial diaphysis and intra-articular fractures, for damage control surgery in polytrauma patients, and acute and chronic infections in both fractures and non-unions. Either a modular or a uniplanar frame is selected. If a modular frame is chosen, the shunt screws can be freely inserted in the safe zones and help primary and subsequent reductions. In this exercise, a modular fixator is applied. The instruments needed are the compact air drive, the quick coupling, the drive adapter with quick coupling for 5 mm shunt screws, four 125 mm long, 5 mm diameter self-drilling shunt screws with a thread length of 40 mm are needed. Conventional shunt screws may be used as well. Also needed is the drill sleeve assembly which includes the handle for drill sleeves, the short 6.05.0 threaded drill sleeve, the short 5.0 3.5 drill sleeve, and the short 3.5 trocar. The universal chuck with T-handle may also be used to advance the shunt screws. For the construction of the modular frame, four large MR-safe open adjustable clamps, two 11 mm diameter carbon fiber rods, two large MR-safe combination clamps, and one additional 11 mm diameter carbon fiber rod are needed. Required to tighten the frame assembly are the 11 mm cannulated socket wrench and the 11 mm combination wrench. An anteromedial position is recommended for the placement of the external fixator. The shunt screws must be placed in the safe zones. Here they're shown with the fracture reduced. In general, the shunt screws should be placed medial to the tibial crest. This placement is particularly important in the distal tibia to avoid interference with the tendons and neurovascular bundle. The position of the frame should not interfere with access to the wound for the initial debridement. After a stab incision is made, the drill sleeve assembly is inserted through the incision and placed directly on the bone surface. The trocar is removed, and since self-drilling, self-tapping shunt screws are used, the drill sleeve also is removed. A shunt screw is inserted into the adapter. The power drive is used to advance this first self-drilling shunt screw through the outer drill sleeve until its tip is anchored in the far cortex. In the clinical situation, irrigation is recommended while inserting the shunt screws. The image intensifier can be used to check the final position of the shunt screws. The tip of the self-drilling shunt screws must be anchored in the far cortex to ensure stable fixation. Penetration of the far cortex is not necessary. Once the shunt screw has been placed, it's released from the adapter and the drill sleeve assembly is removed. As an alternative, the power drive is used only to insert the shunt screw through the near cortex and the universal chuck with T-handle is mounted onto the shunt screw. The shunt screw is advanced by hand until it's anchored in the far cortex. The remaining shunt screws are now inserted again with the power drive. Two screws should be introduced into each main fragment. 
The position of the screws should be determined according to the fracture pattern, the soft tissue injury, and the local anatomy. To improve the stability of the external fixator, the shunt screws should be widely placed. The large, open, adjustable clamps connect the shunt screws in each main fragment to a carbon fiber rod. The nuts on the large adjustable clamps are initially tightened by hand. The 11 mm socket wrench is then used for provisional tightening, and the combination wrench is used for final tightening. The rod ends of the two fragments nearest the fracture are connected to a third rod using one large combination clamp for each fragment. The nuts of the combination clamps are not yet tightened. The two partial frames are used as handles to reduce the fracture. Clinically, the reduction can be verified by gentle palpation, visually, or with image intensification. The reduction is maintained by hand, while the nuts of the combination clamps are tightened alternately. Final tightening is done with the combination wrench. Increased stability can be provided with a neutralization rod. The additional implants needed are two large open adjustable clamps, and one 11 mm diameter carbon fiber rod. It's sufficient to attach the rod to one shant screw in each main fragment. This presentation has demonstrated the choice of frame type, the positioning and correct insertion of the shant screws, and the construction of the rod-to-rod -rod modular frame.